vanilla, cinnamon buns, black opium, horses, morning sunlight. These are a few of the favorite smells of my next guest, who is very spiritual and gifted, Bethany Love. <laughs> Bethany? <laughs> I can't even do it. Like, she, this amazing voice over there. <laughs> well, it's, the, it's the radio thing. Bethany, who, who the hell are you? Tell us, please. Uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Me, Bethany Love. I am about love. Like, literally, that's what I teach about truly being loved because I think that's what we all need. And what I do is teach and guide people, um, specifically women, how to really connect back to their inner voice and who they truly are and to start trusting themselves because we've been in this world guided to really listen to people externally and we're listening to the doctors and to the person to buy our house and how to invest and how to wear our hair and how to do all this instead of going back within yes and listening what works for us yes get ready for the real estate show that takes you across the barriers and into the danger zone that bitch in real estate podcast with your host tenacious t There is that old saying of listen to your intuition, listen to your inner voice. Yeah. And simply put, that is what you teach. How to get back, connect with that, and listen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love that. Uh, Vanilla, love vanilla, love cinnamon buns. I love horses, morning sunlight. Black opium? Yeah, that's a YSL perfume that oh. is like so good okay because i'm thinking is this an open <laughs> then what 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 is this a past life experience well, you, just said, you just said sense and i was like i really love that scent. <laughs> that's awesome so it's a perfume <laughs> it is not opium in general <laughs> the good Definitely to know. a past life you know <laughs> right <laughs> bethany you have uh you have a difficult story yeah it is not an easy story to tell it's not an easy story to hear Everyone has a path, a journey, a life that we're living. Mm -hmm. Some of us experience certain things after severe traumas. Right. Give me briefly, as briefly as you can make it, what happened to you and your first experience with connecting to inside and God. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would say I've always, like, been connected to God. God, but it was more of a religious thing. And I still had a relationship. So I questioned certain things that for me in what I was being taught didn't really resonate with me. And I was like, ah, this just doesn't seem right. And what what religion were you practicing I, at the time? I grew up a uh, non-denominational Christian. Gotcha. Which and, is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. A lot of truth, you know, the, it's just, it's all about the relationship. And I always questioned things about hell. Mm-hmm. And, like, if God loved everyone, right. why would certain people go to hell? Like, I just didn't, as a kid, when I was, like, eight, seven, I was, like, doesn't seem right to me. Right. So you are love. Right. So yeah. I just, <laughs> so those things didn't seem right. So I was always a pretty, like, spiritual person in that aspect. But my true, like, a, like awakening journey really did happen through the trauma. And after the trauma, like, it made me really go deep within and ask myself some questions. Right. So basically I, um was in a really abusive relationship. Um, It was my first boyfriend. I was 17 when I met him. And it was an on and off thing for 13 years. And that doesn't mean I was with him every part of the 13 years physically. However, he had my heart for those 13 years. And So someone you just fell madly in love with. Correct. Would some, and we'll take it to the woo-woo plane, would some call that a twin flame for you? Or they would call it a karmic when, a path that you had to go down. Yeah, it's it's, it's like it's, it's just like that's that much. It's like exactly like a twin flame, but it's not. It's there to teach you and push you into your life purpose. Gotcha. So actually, something that I heard, and I, I heard this on Gaia because I like Gaia, mm-hmm. and it actually hit home for me. Is sometimes the people that hurt you the most love you the most because in order for you, us as humans, a lot of times to be pushed into our path, we have to go to through extreme pain. Yes. As human beings. Yeah. Not spiritual beings, but yeah. as humans, we're very stubborn. I like to use the analogy of they're trying to show us. Yeah. 
we're not remembering or seeing it. Right. So every once in a while, they have to pull out the sledgehammer. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. But so yeah. Please continue. <laughs> yeah. So um, I met him when I was 17. But I want to give you a little back end to this, which I think really, so you know the power of who you are as a manifester. We're always manifesting. Yes. With what we think and say and ask. Mm-hmm. And I know when I was 13, I was super, you know, connected to God in that way. And I was just like, opened my arms and was like, God, help me help as many people as possible in this world. And how old were you again? 13. 13 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, gosh, I, I think I was surfing in Hawaii at the time. I, that is not a normal thing <laughs> that, a, that a child thinks of. And I want to point that out because it was something you recognized in yourself early on that you just wanted to do. The desire was there. Yeah. Yeah. Since I was like six, I knew I was going to be speaking around the world, but I thought I was going to be a pro athlete. So I had the vision oh, awesome. at six. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but like, it's like you're saying, yeah. it's there. But you just didn't know how it was yeah, going to manifest. Right. <laughs> right. And so what I would say through this is that a lot of times we as people go through really hard things, but in order for us to come into who we truly are on a spiritual, as a spiritual being manifested in a physical form, we have to go through certain things because people will not resonate or hear you if you haven't been through what they've been through. And right. you can't empathize with them because you have no feeling towards it. Right. Like, I was a pretty you know, had a pretty good upbringing. Like I didn't see really anything, no crime, no, like really, I just didn't know those things existed. I didn't watch bad movies because to me, it was really hard on me spiritually. Like I would cry. Right. right. I could, I still can't watch really bad movies. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually have trouble with that too. And especially when the boys are like, mom, can we watch this? No, you're not allowing that in my house. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, and your spirit's I, always been telling you that, right? And it, Yes. And it may seem silly. Like for me, when I was a kid, it was the exorcist. Oh right? my gosh. And, and, and I will, I still, to this day, I've only briefly seen like a little bit of it one time and it's burned. And it, cause it's just, Does, I knew that it would had no room, no place in my life. And uh, it, there's there's a vibe, <laughs> you'd like to say. So, yes, I, I recognize that. And you obviously recognize that early on. Yeah. Were, did you grow up on a farm? What, what, what? It makes it sound like you were just in this beautiful, peaceful family life. Well, I mean, there was, I'm sure, things. But looking at other people's, like, yes. it was pretty... Pretty mellow. <laughs> mellow. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so... Um, no, I didn't grow up. Well, I was born on like a 200 acre property in northern Wisconsin, but we only lived there till I was like four. Oh. And then we went back throughout the summer till I was 15. So we did have oh, it still. Oh, cool. But Yay. for like, I was, it was my summer home. Nice. Yeah. So, but then we traveled for two, two years. My dad was very spiritual. I mean, he, they went across Europe and he left my, um, mom with five kids in northern wisconsin oh in the snow okay <laughs> and oh. it was a very hard <laughs> yes. winter for her yes he came back and said you know god showed him that he was supposed to take a trip out west and we thought it was going to be a couple months and here it, you are yeah and it turned into a couple years which then turned into the rest of my life yes and i yeah so you're with a uh you, you met your karmic love at the time yeah 17 and for 13 years you were together well on and off yeah on and off you 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 couldn't break the bond from him correct for 13 years right please continue okay um yeah so basically we met when i was about 17 and then we literally um i think we were really drawn to each other and we were both athletes and um you know the signs were there in the beginning yet i didn't really know them because i had never been around that that and I just had so much love in my heart. And when you're saying signs, are you saying that he had uh, narcissistic tendencies, yes, uh, abusive yes. verbally, yes. physically? Um, physically wasn't till like, but it was, it was like I don't know, was it six months, seven months in the first time? Yeah, yeah. And um, so tell me, because <clears throat> I've been in that position before too. Tell me. Why, for you, even when it was happening, why was it something you just kept pushing aside? Was it something you felt like he wouldn't do again or that would fade away or that you could change in him? Yeah. So I think for a lot of people, you know, it changes as the time goes on. But I think in the beginning, it's like, I can't believe this just happened to me. And then when they say they're sorry, 
you do you think like it's never going to happen again the first couple times yeah the first couple times you you want them and to say sorry yeah you, you want to be like okay that this this is over it was a fluke yeah it'll never happen again yeah we love each other yeah 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 and then it gets like intense and better for a little while and then um so I would say the first few times I definitely felt that maybe it wouldn't happen again mm-hmm but then as you've progressed in it, you realize, and then, then it goes into, well, I can change. Yes. I can love them enough. Yes. So that they won't anymore. They will change for me. Yes, they will change for me. We know this syndrome. Yes. And did it become, they will change for a child? Um, well, I actually left for like a couple of years, just saw him during the summer. So we were still connected. And then I did still want his child. I always thought we were mm-hmm. meant to have a child together. Mm-hmm. And so I think unconsciously, that was a thought. He, it will be different when we have yeah. a child. Yeah. And I think that's a normal thing. It is. It's a very normal thing, and it's almost a trap that yeah. um, a, as a woman, mm-hmm. when we have exhausted everything that we feel we can do to change the situation and and just have have this relationship just be love, right. we feel like, okay, I'm going to bring a child in. Because yeah. that's what a child is, the the ultimate expression of love, right? right? Yeah. So actually, I always wanted a kid with, with him, but I was like, I don't want kids till I'm in my 30s. And I really didn't want one till mm-hmm. I was in my 30s. Mm-hmm. But I did want one with him at that time. Yeah. Um, I just thought it would be way later. So I ended up getting pregnant when I was 20 and had her, my daughter. And um, I would say that then the abuse, um, you know, I also became a dancer. He asked me to dance, and it was supposed to only be for, like, two weeks. Then it became longer. And and whatever you're comfortable with here. But, mm-hmm. again, you you know, you've had a child. Uh, you're, you're in a relationship. You're struggling to reach that point of, I just want him to love me. Right. I just want him to love me. For me. Yeah. Yeah. I've given him a child. I've sacrificed for him. Yeah. Why can't he sacrifice for me? And he asks you, hey, dancing makes a lot of money. Yeah. Or whatever it was at the time. Yeah. And so you went into that field. Mm-hmm. Continue. Yeah. So then basically I was like, yeah, for two weeks. And mm-hmm. we ac- I actually got beat up right before I started working because I was like, I'm not doing this. I was so upset because I right. couldn't learn it. I mean, I was a basketball player. I was trying to go to D1 and I didn't wear heels. <laughs> and I was trying to wear them falling. Can a dancer wear tennis shoes? <laughs> <laughs> I think that might work. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, yeah, it was not good. And I was feisty. I was always feisty. I've yeah. always been. And um, so it got me into trouble a lot in that way. So let me ask you this, because I'm a little feisty myself. They do <laughs> call me tenacious T. And when you're in that relationship and you're trying to be yourself and they start coming at you, mm-hmm. it's really difficult just to shut your mouth. Yeah, it yeah. is. Well, it's it's difficult to – well, like I, w- I be- did become much more passive because of the things that happened to sure. it. However, in the beginning, I mean, there were times where I think all of us, uh, we just had enough and we just keep talking like, you know, it's like, or if it's something that you feel passionate enough about that you're not going to step down and it turns into something else. They realize that they're not right. So the only way that they're going to be able to shut you up is to beat the shit out of you. Correct. Yeah. 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 And I think it's important that men and women, especially young women, Mm -hmm. hear that. Yeah. Because that will resonate. They have felt that. There, yeah. There's plenty going through it right now. Right. right now, yeah. Like right now, it's the rise has gone up since this whole um, situation has been, and it's across every country. Yeah. And so what I would say to the pe- women and men listening, it's not you. It's not your fault. And no matter what you do, it's never going to be enough because mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with that person. The one thing it took me a long time to figure out is just because we push buttons does not mean that they can right. scream at us, yell at us, physically hurt us. Right. Someone could come right in my face right now, scream right in my face right now, and I still wouldn't physically right. touch them because I would realize that pain is theirs. Right. It is not mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's never okay, no matter what, yeah. to do that. And as someone who is, you know, we all are going to continue healing throughout our life because there's different things that come up. So I'm never yeah. going to say we're completely 
healed because there's yeah. something else that comes up. No. <laughs> Nobody's completely perfect. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I would say say that, yeah, and it, it doesn't, but as you, as, like the point of like the work that I do, and I'll get back to the story, is, is that if you are an empowered woman or an empowered human, I mean, I want to reach everybody, but because I am a woman, I'm going to resonate with women more. Of course. You know, and I have a story. And of there's course. plenty of women out there. I think it's like 66% of women who have, have been abused. It's mm-hmm. not, and it's probably it's more. Number. It's probably more than that because the majority of them are not even reported. Right. So, but if we as human beings, each and every one of us can stand and realize who we truly are, we're not even going to be attracted to that type of person because yes. we're going to know right away. Yes. Like that something's off Mm -hmm. and will go a different way. But when you're not, don't understand who you are and you're not brought up to understand your power as a human and your worth and who you are. like Acceptable boundaries. Right. And boundaries. I was not taught boundaries. No. Yeah. And that, I would say, was probably what led me into that Mm -hmm. because I had no boundaries. Right. Zero. Yeah. You had no idea. Yeah. And karmically, you had to experience it. (laughs) Yeah. So take us to that dark place. Basically, it was on and off for um, 13 years. And the, the, the end, the last date that I saw my ex was, um, I think it was the 13th of, 13th or 14th of August, 2014. That was the last time I ever saw him, ever spoke to him. And so it's coming up to six years this this month, which is a long time. Yeah. Um, Good for you. Yeah. And, but it took my, uh, our daughter, my daughter, and what she went through for me to truly, like, not try to ever help yeah. him again. Because over those years, he continued to do things to degrade you. Right. Become a dancer. I'm going to control her that way. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell her things. Subliminal messages. Mm-hmm. You are not good enough. You right. are not worthy. Right. I am here, and you should feel lucky that I am. Right. Right? Yeah, for sure. Definitely that was subliminally there for sure. So yeah, so there was a couple different episodes. So my voice now is really raspy because in like 2000, I think it was 2009, I went to leave and I think it was February, like almost 22nd. I remember almost the day around the time. And Did um, you have your baby yet? Yeah. Yes. She yeah, was two and a half. Yes. She was yes. two and a half. And there had been some episodes, you know, but there's, you know, anybody that's been through this sure. knows there's plenty. My, I don't think mine were as some people get beat up like every day or oh, every other yeah. day. I yeah. wasn't like that. It was right. maybe once or twice a year. But mm-hmm. when I did, it was like Bad. you thought you were going to die. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how I'm here. <laughs> right. And, um, and then the verbal and emotional and all that, which is horrible, you know. But anyways, so I um, literally got um, choked to where... I lost consciousness. I have never lost consciousness. I think I peed myself. I don't re- I don't remember what happened. All I know is that he was choking me so hard that I lost consciousness. He mm-hmm. held me on the wall. And um, after that, I couldn't really talk very well for about two weeks. I pretty much lost my voice. So he and- kind of crushed your yeah. larynx. Yeah. Yeah. So my voice was already getting more raspy from being a dancer because you talk over and I worked so much, but it got really raspy after that. And so now my voice is forever raspy. It's very sexy. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you lean up in there and say, hello. <laughs> hello. You see, there you go. <laughs> just bring You're it so down. Funny. Yes. Yeah. So, and then just to go through all that, there was just, there's a lot. And I don't want to like drag people too sure. much in it. But but through all of that, and the last time was um, we were met, supposed to get legally married. I think it was February 7th on paper. 2014 and I knew in my heart I could not marry even right. though I wanted in my heart like on a higher level sure I knew I couldn't if I, I would be stuck forever right and I was just like and then that night there was some stuff that led up to it there was drugs at that time and the last year of a relationship mm-hmm. and he uh held two knives to my chest for about three hours and they were big knives and basically threatened to stab me like 63 times if I didn't tell him the truth about something which I kept telling them the truth, but he didn't. He believed his own truth in his head of what he thought. Actually he had happened. created his own story right. to justify his actions towards you. Correct, and yes. someone else. Yes. And so, therefore, no matter what I said, it. I was, and I remember this is coming to that, and I was already introduced to numerology and and some of the other stuff, and getting yes. into that. And I remember sitting there thinking, I got really calm. Yeah. And was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this. But I have to make it out because I have to get out for for our daughter. Yeah. 
and because otherwise she'll forever be with him and no one will know right. who he truly is behind closed doors. Yeah. And uh, so I eventually just told him everything he wanted to say here and said that yeah, right. that was true. I did it and he handed me the knives. Interesting. Yeah, but then it got started to build back up and I yeah. knew it was going. Yeah. And I actually left and I le actually left my daughter there because I knew I couldn't take her. So that is a classic technique of torturing someone to get information and they'll keep doing it till they hear what they want to hear even if it's not true mm. and that's exactly what he did yeah he tortured you until he heard what he wanted to hear yeah and then for a moment he's like okay i heard it now but now that i've heard it i'm going to take further action yeah it just felt like if i didn't leave I thought it was I, – I just had this feeling like the there was a time a couple of months before that that he was going to kill me. Yeah. Like, not that he himself, but there was a darkness coming. It was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I just felt it and I left. And it, yeah. I didn't want to take my daughter, but there was no – like there was so many different things in there where he would threaten my family, threaten to kill everybody in my sure. family, threaten to dismember me. Like, you know, just always threatened yeah. or threatened that he would keep our daughter yeah. from me. And I just didn't know how to get out. To keep you from leaving, they have to instill – the most fear that they possibly right. can because it's control. Right. Fear is control. We are feeling this right, right. now yeah. in today's world. Right. A lot of the things yeah. going on right now are to invoke fear. Right. Because when someone is afraid, right. they look for someone to be their leader. Right. And at the time, the only leader you had right. was him. Right. 100%. So, yeah, so that, so since then, and a lot of other stuff, I am, you know, been on my journey of my awakening, like I was already connected, but that like really pushed me. Was it an inner voice that said, you have to leave, you, you have to leave this situation and leave it behind forever? Um, well, even that I ended up going back to get my daughter because I couldn't get oh, my daughter yeah. out. Yeah. And there was no way. Right. To, and I was, I went back in knowing that I was either going to die or go to prison, one or the other, if I didn't yeah. get her out. Like, mm -hmm. I could. And that was, I didn't, was okay with that as long as I got her out. Oh, that is so, like, totally off topic, but same exact thing for me. I had, yeah. I had Jason, but my ex had Brian at the time. Like, yeah. when I left, I had Jason. Yeah. I was going to go pick up Brian, and yeah. he went and got Brian, and I had to go back. Yeah. And, you know, go through that all to, but I got Brian out of it. Yeah. yeah. But mine was a few months later, because I was like, oh, he would, I never thought he would hurt her in the yeah. way. I thought later on, yes. Yeah. But I was like, okay. I, yeah. I it's totally. like a, there's, I think when you go through that, it's kind of like a war zone. So you have to find out like what is the, when you look at it, you have to be very strategic mm -hmm. and know ultimately what your goal is. And sometimes there's things that happen that you don't want to happen, but ultimately to get the final outcome, right. that happens. It's there's, really hard to explain, but it's true. It's again, you're, yeah. you're in a war zone. Yeah. What can you possibly salvage now so that you can finish the mission later? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So at that moment, you had to salvage, your, salvage yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I was out, she, she had no hope. So you were able to get out of the situation. Yeah. A few months later, you know, work on getting your daughter, which that in itself is a very long story, right? Yeah. And all the things that you had to go through. That was different, yeah. But. Yeah. You sought out educating yourself and connecting more spiritually. Why? Well, because I knew that was the only way. Like I knew and that and I knew, knew like that was the only way that my life would change when I became stronger. Right. And that the only hope for her or even him or anything. Right. Was or it, it, or in my whole family that was involved in it. Yeah. Because of me. Right. And my choice to be with him. Mm -hmm. um, that the only way that things could change is if I became strong. Right. And... Um, Every time that I left, I became stronger and I knew more and I became wiser. Right. And I think there was a part of me that died every time, like yeah. with him. Yes. And that I'm just explaining that because maybe someone out there resonates with this. So I want to just like encourage people that like even if you don't make it like it's okay, like you're getting stronger yes. and eventually you'll get to the point where there's no going back. Every person is different. Mm -hmm. Some people it's one time. Some yeah. people it's three I don't know what it is for anybody that might be listening, but just know that you'll know. Yeah. It was about, f I think, five for me. And um, even when uh, he ended up passing away years and years ago, but even when he did, and I'd been free of that situation for a while, I weeped. Yeah. I weeped. 
that there is a very strange connection that I think because we wanted it so bad at the time. Yeah. We so wanted that relationship. We so wanted that to happen. Yeah. And finally letting go of it, like you said, little deaths at a time until yeah. you were strong enough to do that. So tell me what you first, what were some of the first things you did to work on yourself? Um, so coming out, like I literally had nothing mm -hmm. um, left of everything. I mean, I had everything. I had my daughter and I. Yeah. So that's everything. But Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a suitcase <laughs> and finally my two babies. That was it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that happens a lot. But um, anyway, so I, I really, um, so the first year I really read a lot and I, I started to really um, just be with myself a lot. And my spirit would guide me like literally like to research or to get specific mm -hmm. book and then I wanted wanted to work at a this consignment store because I love fashion and I was, didn't want to be around anybody but like <laughs> women it was all older women and I was like okay I don't have to think there I can just <laughs> yeah. be I just wanted to have like some yeah. income and not think yeah absolutely and and to not be afraid right so but there I I numerology was already at play but uh yeah it's literally I started reading a lot of books and researching online but the books led me to different awakenings within because they had that information so like when I would go into this consignment store and like when I was on break or I was leaving I would go look at the bookshelf because I love books and I'd yeah. be like okay what one and I would just what everyone called to me yes <laughs> and that literally was the first year. And that will sound strange to someone like, oh, got books are calling to her. It's it's actually as simple as you go to the library or the bookstore yeah. and suddenly you may see one on the yeah. shelf and you're like, ooh, yeah. that looks intriguing. It's really as simple as that. Right. Only you feel it a little stronger once right. you recognize <laughs> what to feel with. So it's it's not that it's some sort of special power that she has. It's something we all have. Right. If you learn how to listen to it, correct? Right, yeah. correct. As you learn to listen to it. And I think when you get to a place where you realize nothing else is working, mm -hmm. you actually start going back within to mm -hmm. listen to you. Yeah. And I think that's what happened for me. Several even entrepreneurs in the business world. It is so strange, the commonality that books really, truly are their teachers and their original foundation. It wasn't that they... I had to do some sort of um, a big training course with, you know, uh, the, the, the Buddha or the guru. It's the right. original foundation, the original little spark of curiosity. Right. All came from books. Right. So this goes back. So Neil Donald Walsh, you know who that is, right? No, I don't. You don't? No. Oh, tell me. I who, never knew who it was either. Yeah, until who, I... Who's Neil? What are you not teaching me? <laughs> <laughs> what are you not teaching me? <laughs> no, so what's really funny, this is – so Neil Donald Walsh, I actually didn't get the book from there. I was staying at my brother's, and there was this book by – underneath, like, there was a bed stand. And I, like, uh, looked at it, and it said, it said relationship with God. And I was like, interesting. So I opened it up. And I swear that book was like my – changed the, my life. And it's called Relationship, Relationship with, with God. God. Yeah. I love it. And he has a whole book series on conversation with God. And he was homeless and his whole story. So he does the conversation with God? Yeah. Books? Katie just said that that was her first book that really – oh, my God. <laughs> Why don't I – how do we spell his name? Why haven't I read Neil these? Neil okay. uh, N-E-A-L – E, I think, or no. <laughs> I'll then, have it oh, floating above yeah, and, you know, I'll highlight it in the, in yeah. the production. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is fascinating. But it, it literally confirmed everything that I felt as a kid. Wow. And I was like, oh. wow. Yeah. Okay, well, this is definitely the reading that needs to take place for me. <clears throat> Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So you've gone down this really difficult path. And, yeah. and, and I don't even know if, I mean, difficult doesn't do a justification. It's you were crushed into nothing, into less than dust, yeah, for basically. Sure. Mm -hmm. And somehow you swirled out of that pile of dirt mm -hmm. and created you again. Yeah. Which the person you are now, if you were to look into the mirror now, mm -hmm. is it a completely different person or human than that girl at 17. Yes. A lot of, well, yes, completely different. 
but not different in the way of like I'm fiery, I'm creative. All the things that I essentially was is still me. However, I'm I have so much more depth and so much more caring and such a bigger heart and awareness of what is going on in the world and who I am to the world instead of feeling like I have to go prove something or I have to do it this way. I'm so connected to myself that I don't wonder those things anymore and I don't compare myself to anybody anymore. And I don't, I'm not saying there aren't times where you're like, oh, that person like, oh, I got to, you know, work out more. Not saying that doesn't come up. I'm human. However, I don't like, I am so much stronger so much more powerful and so much more content as a person because I'm not thinking I have to be this pro athlete to be good or to create my mission. Like I don't have to do anything but be me yes. and create. And it's such a yes. good feeling. Yeah. And your creation, again, is love. Yeah. <laughs> love. You create love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did 365 days of shout outs of love to a different human being all year last year consistently. Well, I think There's maybe a you couple missed days. a day or two. I but missed a couple days, but I, did, I made up the days. 65 yeah, times. I did. I did. <laughs> different people. I don't, I don't, I'm sure I know 365 people, <laughs> but why, why was that so important for you to do? Was that part of your own transformation? You know, I don't, I I think it definitely transformed me. I think everything does. It was literally that voice, my higher self, that I had done that one where we connected right before we connected the women's event. (laughs) was like, I was honoring all the women. And then spirit was like, why don't you do this for a year for people? I'm like, uh, are you serious? (laughs) I'm like, no, that's a lot. That's a commitment. I'm like, are you serious? And I was like, yes, people need to feel because my goal is for people to feel appreciated and loved and right. like know, like heard. And that's literally what that was about. Yeah. Because we don't, no matter who you are, we don't hear it enough. Yeah. And it was a small thing, but it really did impact a lot of people. And it's so amazing that you bring that up because there were so many times where there were people, obviously, I didn't know all those people, I but I have a lot of friends on Facebook. Yeah. Social connections yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. And you were giving them a shout out right. of love. But a lot of them I do actually know personally. Yeah. So it was a, but there was times where I would like literally um, ask spirit, like what name? And I would go through a list <laughs> and it would be like this name. I'm like this one, yeah. this one, this one. I would yeah. say no. And then I would go on to one and I would do that. And then Almost every time that I did that, um, I would the person would be like, "You do not know how much I needed Aww. to hear that today." Aww. So it was me following and being guided by my intuition yeah. to give someone that's in my vortex, in my social media that I don't actually know, but's there to send them love and appreciation. Love. Yeah, yeah. So again, those that aren't in the woo woo world. <laughs> There, you're probably sitting there going, oh, she's talking about spirit talking to her and this and that. It's as simple as the book yeah. that you see in the bookstore mm-hmm. that in mo- many ways calls out to you to right. check it out, to go read it. Mm-hmm. That is that is that voice. Right. And for you, you call it spirit. Yeah. I I think I call it God, source, spirit. <laughs> woo woo different the, names my, different my inner my my inner ego i mean no <laughs> <laughs> but it's different for everyone because i think we have really no way to explain it physically right you can't it's just there yeah it's literally another dimension right we're all connected we're all connected right yeah. we're mind body spirit soul like they're they're different but they're the same it's hard to explain yeah but all this in one yet um there's different frequencies to each thing and 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 let's give them a simple way to to think of frequencies and i love to do um a concert so if you're at a concert and let's say we'll say guns and roses and (laughs) axel rose is drunk and he's not coming out and you've been sitting there for an hour yeah and the crowd is getting angry right and they're starting to boo right and you're feeling the energy <laughs> of irritation and anger yeah but then he comes out and he starts playing welcome to the jungle <laughs> you know a great song <laughs> and then suddenly everybody's like yeah yeah and you feel that vibe right 
that's what you're talking about when you say vibe and energy, correct? Yeah. Yep. And just like different. And and to add to that, I would say like, you know, there's different speeds. So when you're like driving on the freeway and there's like a slower speed and then there's a middle speed yes. and then there's a faster speed. Yeah. There is that with energy as well. And so different uh, levels of it brings in different things. Mm -hmm. And um, so connecting to yours, like we all have it. We're all the same yes. in that aspect. Yes. We're no different. And every single person feels it. And you have it really a lot when you're a kid, but we're taken away from it with outside things. With the outside influences and programming. Yeah. So through numerology, through your studies of intuition, through your own guides, mm -hmm. you coach people. Right. To bring that out on themselves and understand. That's the key word here. You help them understand what it is they're listening to, what it is they're hearing. Right. Yeah, what what exactly they're listening to and literally that you don't need anyone externally that if you learn how to start listening to yourself and going within and spending time with yourself that you literally can change your life and you don't have to look to anybody else yeah. because as they would say in certain uh, religion or Christianity is the kingdom of God is within and that is really the truth. Any different teachings, religious teachings, te teaches the same thing. Yeah. It's yeah. within. We are in the image of God mm -hmm. because we are God. Right. We as a whole. Right. Everything about us and the essence of what we are. Right. Is God. Yep. Yeah. I love yeah. that. So if you were a business coach, and we'll use the example of, let's say you were a stock guru and someone came to you and is like, teach me stock. Mm. And this again, because I'm taking the woo-woo out of it to help you understand a little bit more. <laughs> you're teaching me about stock because you're a stock guru. And I come to you and I'll be like, okay, I want this stock, this stock, and this stock. You're going to take a quick look at those stocks and be like, eh, I feel okay about this one. But this one, this one feels like the one you should get right now. Right. That's the type of guidance that you can provide. Right. Correct. Yes. It doesn't matter what 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 you're doing or where you're at it's all about like finding that for you and I I'll help you with that but then I help you what I really am here to do is to help you to trust yourself because yeah. so then you don't look to me or another person there's always confirmations yes. which is great but when you start really going within you're gonna feel so amazing right yeah yeah but that's oh, what I, I do it. yeah I love it I love it okay I want to get to five things you do on a daily basis which that I um, love uh, yeah, that yes, that you that you love and do. She tries to do on a daily basis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we can always get these things in, right? <laughs> Laugh, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> That's good. I think we'll keep that one. <laughs> Exercise, read, help people, and create content. Now that was a story of overcoming. This Friday, we lighten things up with Bethany Love Hannah and the famous question.